Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, we want to start talking about finite state machines, or at least implementing finite state machines in VHDL. So, I'll create a project today and the name will be FSM1. But actually, I'm going to make two different finite state machines. I'll put one inside of another. So let's go to the first state machine. Uh, let's, I'm going to call this first state machine clock um, FSM. Okay, so I'm going to call this CLK FSM, clock FSM. In other words, a finite state machine for a clock. That's really what I want to do with it. Now, what do I want this state machine to look like? So um, we could have, so I'm going to have a reset state. And we want to determine how many states we're going to have in all. So ultimately, I really, so I'm going to have my reset state. Let's just have that first. That's our initial state. And so our arrow pointing in just tells us that's our initial state. We always start from there. Then I want to have a number of um, states. Now, um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, um, I'm thinking, so this is me running a design of how I want things to be. I want to have an entity that has one input that is a button. Okay, so one input that is a button, and I want to give out one output, and that output is a clock. Okay, so actually, there should be two inputs. There are two different clock. There are two um, different inputs. So there's a clock that will come as the input. Then I want to divide this clock signal, divide the frequency of the clock, such that the output frequency that comes out is dependent on the state that this FSM is in. So this is my CLK FSM. It has two inputs here. Uh, well, there's always a third input, which is called, always remember, every FSM has at least two inputs, clock and reset. Okay, so every FSM will always have a clock and a reset input, then generally speaking, then I'm also so effective is like I have just one input, which is the button. So I have a button input, and then I'm going to have a clock out at, as my output. Now, this specific clock will be dependent on the um, this this specific out this um, specific um, what's called clock will be dependent on the um, state that this device is in. So the state the device is in will determine what the clock going out will be. Okay, good. So simple design. Let's go ahead and design this. So how many states do we want to have in here? I can have as many as I really want, but I'm going to do uh, let's say a total of four states. So I'm just going to have four states, two, three, and four. So from my reset state, um, so reset state, I'll call that S reset. S reset. And then I'll have my S0, S1, and S2. Um, okay, so once we get to the reset state, I will definitely come to this state. So that's what I want to do. I want to always definitely come to this state. But in every state, I'm going to use the... Um, I'm going to use the more um, states diagram so that, okay, so I could just put one here so it will always go to that state no matter what. Um, since I'm using more diagram, I'm going to say that my, um, okay, so I need to state, say some more before I talk about what the various outputs will be. So ultimately, I, want, I need to specify what the output will be in each state. I specify what the state is, I need to specify what the output will be. My output is CLK out. Now, what is that equal to in this place? Same thing, CLK out to be something here, CLK out to be something here, CLK out to be something here. Now, what I want to do is whenever my button is equal to one, I want to transition to the next state. So very simple transition, BTN is equal to one. I transition to that state. If BTN is equal to zero, then... Um, so rather, let me do it this way. Let me say when BTN is equal to one, because if I say when BTN is equal to one, that could easily cause a problem. Okay, so maybe I should, um, so, uh, so what I want to say is I don't want to use when BTN is equal to 1. I want to use on rising edge or on falling edge of BTN, not, or not when it is equal to 1. Now, the reason is this. <clears throat> the reason is this. If I say when BTN is equal to 1, then if I press, remember I want to use a button, okay? So when I press the button, it will transition to this state. Again, I want to transition from this state to this state when BTN is 1. Now, when I press on a button, how long will I press the button down for? Even if I press it for one millisecond, remember the clock that is coming in, this clock that is coming in here is a 50 megahertz clock. That's the FPGA clock, the clock on the D10 light board. It's a 50 megahertz clock. 
So if I clock, um, if I press the button down and I hold it for longer than, is it 10, uh, like than 100 microseconds, then it is definitely going to transition to this. I might end up transitioning to this and maybe even back to this. So if my transition several times without me realizing what happened, I'll suddenly have some glitches. So instead of um, transitioning when button is equal to one, I want to transition on the rising edge of, or on the falling edge of BTN. I'll transition on the rising edge of button. So let me just indicate that as this. Okay, so I'm not going to transition on um, when it's equal to one, but rather on the rising edge of this. Then I can simply say this is when not rising edge. Okay, so when not rising edge of button, I will stay within the um, that state. Now I'll do exactly the same thing over here on the rising edge of button. I will uh, transition and on. Once it is not rising edge, I will stay within this. So BTN, I'll write this a different way. So not BTN, um, rising, not rising edge of that. Last transition, again. I'm, so this is effectively just a cycle. There's no end per se. Um, it just keeps on going. So on the rising edge of button, I'm going to transition. And once we are not, once we don't have a rising edge of button, then I'm going to stay within the state S2. Simple FSM, and this should work. Is there anything we've left out? Oh, we've not talked about what the outputs would be. Yes, so what are the outputs? What output will we have in each one of these states? So I said what I want this to be is a, 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 um, a, an entity that divides the frequency of the clock that comes in, okay? So it's an entity that divides the frequency of the clock that comes in. Now, I'm going to make, um, so let, we, I'm going to use a concept. So to illustrate a concept, let me just give some, myself some room. I'll come back to, um, I'll come back to this in a bit. I'll come back to that diagram. I'll finish up the diagram in a bit. Let's give myself some room. Now we know that if we have a, um, a clock, say we have a clock CLK, and we have a certain signal. Let me call the signal A. Let's say it's a three-bit signal, zero, zero, zero. So we're going to start from zero, zero, zero. Say on the active clock transition, say on the rising edge of the clock, we have this toggling. So it will go to one once there's a rising edge of the clock. Every rising edge of the clock, the counter will change. This is a concept we, we know quite well. So rising edge of clock, we go to, sorry, we go to 010. Next rising edge of clock, we go to 011. Next rising edge of the clock, we go to 100. Next rising edge of the clock, we get 101. Next rising edge of the clock, 110. Next rising edge of the clock, 111. One more. Next rising edge of the clock, we go back to 000. Apologies, it's not a very straight line. Now, given this system, if we ask the question, if this clock has a frequency F, if the frequency of this clock is F hertz, what would be the frequency of your A not the LSB of A? We could ask that question. So you have a rising edge every F. Uh, we're at the frequency of f, that's every one over f seconds, you have a rising edge. On the other hand, if you ask the question, so let's say, so you have a rising edge every one over f seconds, okay? Every one over f seconds, there's a rising edge. Every one over f seconds, there's a rising edge. How many one over f seconds does it take to arrive, to have a chain, a, a full cycle of your LSB of A? Well, it's zero here, then it is one, and then it cycles back to zero. So after two rising edges of the clock, it will cycle back to zero. So after two over f um, um, seconds, then the your LSB frequency, the, your LSB will have cycled completely. So if the, if the C of the clock is equal to one over f seconds, then just by checking this, you go a full cycle, your T of A naught will be equal to two over f seconds. Okay, so when you have two active clock transitions, this would have completely gone a full cycle. Let's ask the same question about A1, this middle bit. Your TA1, the period of the A1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we require four active clock transitions, 4 over F seconds. So we have 4 over F seconds. That is the period of your TA1. And your TA2 is 8 over f seconds. Again, you could count this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It takes 8 active clock transitions. In other words, 8, um, eight over f, 8, 1 over f seconds. So that's 8 over f seconds to arrive, to have a full cycle of the MSB of A. This is a 3-bit three, um, three system. 
So we could ask, what's the frequency of the clock? FCLK, we already stated that as F. Um, F A naught, just the inverse of this, will be F over 2. So it divides the frequency by 2. F A 1 will be F over 4. It divides the frequency by 4. And F A 2 will be F over 8. Okay, so it divides the frequency by 8. In other words, if we wanted to have, if we wanted to divide, divide um, in fact, if we wanted to have a system that had one input as the clock with a frequency f, and we want to have three outputs, three different frequencies at the outputs, it will be possible to tap out your a naught, your a1, and your a2, and those give you three different frequencies, each one of them being um, a double of the other, or being half of the other. Okay, so a naught will be half of f. It, a1 will be half of a naught or one over one quarter of f. A2 will be one eighth of f or one half of a1 or one quarter of a naught. So using this concept, what I'm going to do... Oh, so uh, one more thought. Why is this over 2, over 4, over 8? Well, it turns out that if you analyze the system well enough, then it makes sense, and I, I believe you will agree with me, that let's assume your A had not been a 3-bit system. Imagine that there had been a... Okay, so let's just extend this a little further. What if I had had a TA3? In other words, we had a 4-bit in there. What would this have been? I think it's, it's probably obvious to you that this would be 16 over F seconds, okay? In which case, the frequency A3, um, the frequency of A3 would have been F over 16. What's the relationship now between 2, 4, 8, 16? I think this is kind of clear. When we had just one bit, just one bit. So if you think about, if, you, if, you, if we had just a one bit counter, then this is all would have had over here. Your A naught is all would have had. The frequency of that bit is divided by 2. Every additional bit you add divides further by 2. And if you want, that is if you add 2 bits, the MSB of a 2 bit counter will divide by 4, 2 raised to power 2. And the MSB, of an, the most significant bit of a 3-bit counter will divide by 8, 2 raised to power 3. The MSB of a 4-bit counter will divide by 16. 16 is 2 raised to power 4. So, 2 raised to power 4, well, uh, that's 16. So, if I had a 24-bit counter, what will it divide by? I think the question, the, I think the answer is, point comes out quite simply that the MSB, in other words, F of A24 of this system, um, oh no, sorry, f of a23, we call it 23 of this system because the 24-bit system started from zero, so f of a23 will be equal to f over 2 raised to power 24. What is this um, exact value? Well, we could actually get that, but that's not the, the crux of this discussion right now. So in other words, it, we can divide the frequency by any amount by just simply um, doing this. So let's ask a question. If we had a, um, if we had a, 24-bit um, counter, if I had a 24-bit counter and we had our 50 megahertz clock, what would be the frequency of the MSB? Let's try that. So the frequency of the MSB, 50 ex exponential 6, that's the frequency of the um, clock coming in. And then let's divide that by 2, divide up, sorry, divide by that by 2 um, raised to the power of um, 24. So if we have a 24-bit counter, what would be the frequency of that? So the frequency of that will be 2.98 hertz. So in other words, this will happen. So you have that cycle happening 2.98 times. Um, and so if we had a 24-bit counter, then the MSB will have a frequency of 2.9802 hertz. The next significant bit after that, not the most significant bit, the next one, the immediate next one after that, the 23rd, the 22nd, um, well, the 23rd bit, if you want, 23rd bit, which would be our A22, will have a frequency of 5.96 hertz and all the way down that way. So, why don't let's go ahead and do something of this nature. We're going to have a um, 24 megahertz, we're going to have a 24 bit counter and use that to divide our 50 megahertz clock. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And um, by doing that, I could now talk about what the outputs will be. So the frequency, so I'll just talk about the frequency of the outputs here, if that's okay. The clock out, the frequency of the clock out will be F over 2 raised to power 24. 2 raised to power 24 in the reset state. In the S naught state, the frequency will be F 
over 2 raised to the power 24. So the same, the same value. I'm not going to change that. But in the S1 state, F over 2 raised to the power 23. And in the F2, uh, in the S2 state, it could be F over 2 raised to the power 22. In other words, um, my clock out will simply be the MSB of a 24-bit counter in this state. Whereas in my state 1, my clock out will be the 23rd bit of the 24-bit um, counter. In the S2, my clock out will actually be the 22nd bit. So maybe I shouldn't really have written these frequencies. It actually would have been better for me to write this as being whatever the counter it is I use here. So let's say CNT or C. Let me just say C. So my clock out actually would have been C24. My clock out here on this other, on this other hand will be so C24 as well. My clock at this point will be C23. And my clock out here will be C22. Now that's clear. The frequency is stated what the frequencies will be, but actually this is what the values will be. So our design is more or less done. Let's go ahead and write our code. So we want to create a um, we want to create a an FSM. So I'm just simply going to call this FSM one. Now remember I said that there'll be a, a one superset. There'll be it's a, 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 a top level entity, and within that entity there'll be a component that will be this our clock FSM. Okay, so. Um, I will go ahead and create my top-level entity as FSM1. I've not talked about what the FSM1 will do. Maybe I should go ahead and talk about what FSM1 will do before we go ahead with the full design. So our clock FSM, we have our design for our clock FSM, and we know exactly what it is going to do. Now, what I want my top-level entity to be, um, so my FSM1, so this will be my FSM1, okay, my top level entity. Within it, I'm going to have my clock FSM, CLK FSM. I think there was an underscore there, okay. So within it, I'm going to have this. Then I'm going to have to have my 50 hertz clock coming in, CLK. I'm going to have my reset button coming in, RST. And I'm going to have my button also coming, BTN. Okay, those three are going to come in. And I'm going to connect those directly to the... Um, their respective inputs in this. So CLK, RST, and BTN. They could have different names. I happen to give them the same name. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. At the output of this, what I want to do is simple. What I want to do at this output is I want to have LEDs, okay? A 10-bit LED so that we can write to the 10 LEDs on the... Um, it, a 10 bit LED on the D10 light board. So that's what I want to do, right to the 10 LEDs on the D10 light board. So I'm going to call it LEDR because I want to be a little lazy so that I will not have to change the QSF file much. And I'm going to have one more entity in here. Remember, the output of this is CLK out. I think there's an underscore there. I'm going to have a, that output here come into um, another entity over here and that second entity we'll have over here i'll simply call it ring counter cnt so it will be a ring counter what i will do with this is simply cycle the um or okay so let me just show what a ring counter does let me ask you what a ring counter does so a ring counter is one that counts in a ring so for example let's say i had a um a three bit ring counter i could have a three bit ring counter then a three-bit ring counter could possibly go through. It would not necessarily have to be this pattern, but it could be this pattern. Zero, zero, 001. After zero, zero, 001, the next state will be zero, 010. Zero. After zero, one, 010, zero, I want the next state to be 100. Zero, zero. After 100, zero, zero, I want the next state to be 001. Zero, zero, I hope you see that this is a ring. It is counting in a ring. Okay, It's counting in a ring. So this is an example of a ring counter. Let me draw another example. Say we wanted to have a ring counter that was something like this, 0011. So you don't have to have only one bit being higher at a point in time. After that, I want to have 0110, okay? And count in this loop. And then after that, I want to have um, 1100. And after that, I want to have 1001, okay? I hope you can see that this, again, is also a ring counter. Is a ring counter because really it's just counting round just going all the way around. 
So this is um, a ring counter, and I'm going to design a ring counter. Now, what I want to do is effectively light up the LEDs one at a time in the ring counter. So you can see as if the LEDs are moving in one direction. That's what I want to do with the LEDs. So I'm going to count through a pattern. The pattern I want to count through in my ring counter will be, and remember, it's 10 bits. So I want to do 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then the next state after that, so I'm not going to draw all the states. The next state after that will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay? And then the next state after that will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0, okay? And I'm just going to stop at this point, not because in the code we'll actually write everything. So I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot over here. So this is the ring counter I want to design, a 10-bit ring counter. That's what I want to design in there. So that's what the second um, component within my um, FSM 1. That's what the second component will be, is a ring counter. And it will be a 10-bit ring counter, okay? So if you want ring counter 10, 10-bit 10 ring counter, that's fine. It will take in the clock. This clock out coming in will go as a clock into this because every ring counter, every counter needs to have a clock. So it's going to go in as a clock in here, and the output of this will be my LEDR. Again, I could call it something entirely different, but I'll call it LEDR. In fact, maybe I should call it CNT for the sake of it. So let's call it... CNT, CNT, that's a count, but I'll write that count directly to LEDR. One more thing I'm going to wire to that, I'm going to connect this to my reset because every counter also typically will have a reset. Some will also have a preset, so you can make them start from a particular value, but then this will have a reset, and this is about it. So, I think we're done with our design. Now, now we can go ahead and create our top-level entity and let's run through the coding process. So, here we are, um, creating our top-level entity as FSM1. And go ahead to not add anything to this project just as at yet. The particular, board, the particular chip on the board is 10M50DAF484C7G. I believe that's correct. Next. I'm not going to be doing any simulation, so none. Next, and finish. It creates the project, and then we'll go ahead and create our VHDL file. So the first um, entity I'm going to create um, will be the top-level entity just because. Not because I have to create top-level entity first, but I will just create top-level entity. Why not? So top-level entity, um, library, IEEE. Use IEEE dot um, standard logic um, eleven sixty four dot all. Then I'll also use IEEE dot standard um, numeric standard. Um, if I can type numeric standard dot all. Um, since I'm going to be using a counter, there's a chance I will need numeric standard. But if I don't need it, I can take it off later on. Save this as FSM one. That's fine. Entity FSM1 is and entity FSM1 um, architecture behavior of FS, FSM1 is begin and architecture. Architecture BHV. Good. So I'm just going to save this and um, create my next, um, my next ent um, if you want, entity, which will be one of the components. So I'm just going to save myself some time and take the first three lines. I notice I did not take the L, so I'll have to type L and then copy, paste the rest. Okay, so now entity CLK FSM is and, um, entity CLK FSM. Architecture, tech, sure, architecture, divide, so, I mean, you could call it anything. I chose to call it divide because I'm going to use this to divide. Um, divide of clock FSM is begin and architecture divide. Good. So, I'm going to save this as clock FSM. Good. So, I have that saved. Let's go to our design now and um, make sure we're doing everything the way we should do it. So clock FSM is supposed to have three inputs, one output. Each one of these inputs is a button. 
it is a um, standard logic is a single bit the output is also a bit so let's go ahead and declare that so port and then we have inputs um, button not case sensitive but yeah I always like using lowercase it just looks better to me um, okay button what else do we have clock in and um, reset so reset they are all in type in and they are standard logic then we have our output being clock out it's of type it's an output and it's standard logic okay so I think we're done with the declaration let's now come into how it operates so we're going to have a state machine on the inside here and then so we're going to have a state machine on the inside uh, we need a, a signal so we typically use a signal to hold the state how many different states are here there are four different states so we're going to need two bits to encode four different states so let's um, create a now I should maybe full disclosure this is one way to create an FSM I'm going to um, deal with another way shortly okay I'll deal with another way shortly but for now signal states states and so the states each of the states um, are of type standard logic vector because we're using um, two bits to encode it that's one down to zero so state zero zero state zero one state zero two uh, so one zero and state one one so this will be state zero zero state zero one state one zero and state one one i hope that is clear so that's where i've chosen to encode this is that the best way to encode this why not use these names we'll come to that in a bit so remember i said i'll show a different method uh, later on so that will be it for this video in the next video i will continue our program see you in the next one